bringing, bringing things, things back, back from the from future, future cities to the present, let us now zoom into the UAE's flagship sustainability undertaking that exemplifies the humanitarian values of the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan and embodies his visionary legacy. The Zayed Sustainability Prize recognizes pioneering solutions and technologies that can change the world. In the last 13 years, the prize has transformed the lives of 352 million people to date. Follow up. It's not the good times that define us. It's the challenges we face and the lives we touch. Our strength to thrive in solidarity. And that is what the current world requires. For individuals and communities worldwide. And there is no other prize in the world that on this scale and this variety recognizes the uh, positive contribution to fundamental global change. Following in the footsteps of our founding father, the late Sheikh Zayed bin Sultan Al Nahyan, we honor his legacy of sustainable growth and compassion for humanity. For us, and generations to come. Since 2008, the Zayed Sustainability Prize has inspired visionaries and pioneers globally to dare reimagine our shared future. Having awarded 86 sustainability innovators and improved the lives of more than 352 million people around the world, amidst the global pandemic, we continued to make an impact and persevered in our commitment to humanitarian outreach. Echoing a message of resilience, we worked tirelessly towards sustainable recovery and transformed the lives of families, frontline workers and patients, reaching over 110,000 people across the world. Guided by our founders' visionary principles and taken to new heights by our leadership, we renew our commitment to recognizing excellence by honoring those who are shaping tomorrow. Looking forward to once again placing the world's sustainability pioneers center stage at the next Zayed Sustainability Prize Award ceremony in January 2022. In recognition of their inspiring efforts, this is our vision and this is our path unwavering commitment for sustainable development and humanitarianism for expanded reach, transformation and impact. Bringing us from nobody to somebody. This is the Zayed Sustainability Prize. What is the new humanity that we would need to take us to the future in light of all of these challenges that we face today? We've become divided, violent, scared. That's not what makes a human. That's why I've accepted the challenge and the invitation of my sister, Sheikh Abdul of Sharjah, to participate in the Butu Love Challenge. I'm true to my values. I am love. I am a guardian of all that is sacred. I am still growing.
Hani Badia. I'm the Arts and Culture Editor at The National. I'm speaking to you from Abu Dhabi, and I'm delighted to have for our panel discussion today, Her Excellency Sheikh Abdur bin Sultan al Qasimi and Mr. Mamadou Kwid Jim Tori. Sheikh Abdur is president of the International Publishers Association, and I very proudly say she's the first Arab woman to be appointed to the position. She has been a trailblazer in her field, pushing Sharjah on the world map as a hub for reading, literacy, and culture. Mr. Quidjim is the founder and chairman of Africa 2.0 Foundation, a non-for-profit organization that brings emerging leaders together for development in Africa. He's also the founder of the Ubuntu Group, which helps launch socioeconomic projects for sustainable growth of communities. You're both young global leaders at the, economic global, uh, at the World Economic Forum, and last year, 2020, brought you two together once again but this time to launch the Ubuntu Love Challenge, a global movement that is built on the philosophy of Ubuntu. Mr. Kujim, if I can um, start with you and ask you, following the video that we've just seen, how would you describe what Ubuntu is? And am I pronouncing it correctly? So you pronounce uh, pretty well, actually. So uh, back home, we say Ubuntu. So repeat after me, Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Now we're talking. That's great. So thank you for that. So basically, Ubuntu means I am because we are. Uh, it highlights our interdependence as human as human species, and also the fact that we don't exist without the others. We don't exist in isolation, and as such, we need to think as a collective and as one. So you find Ubuntu in different parts of uh, Africa, in Southern Africa, they say Ubuntu. In uh, Rwanda, they say Umubuntu, uh, that means the humans. In uh, Swahili, they say Utu. Uh, in uh, uh, Lingala and DRC, they say Abantu. So that's really the very essence of what makes us human and which is really connected to our heart um, and, um, and our being as a part of a globe, as a community and as one species uh, it, that is also one with, it, with the environment. Um, Sheikha Boudou, I wanted to, 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 to come to you and ask you about how, you know, it's amazing to see the power that one word can have on a person. And the example here is with the Ubuntu Love Challenge and this global movement that has been created. How would you describe the impact of the work that you've been doing since April? Thank you, Samia, and thank you again for giving me the platform to share my thoughts with you on the Ubuntu Love Challenge. You're absolutely right, you know, if one word could have a huge impact on society, it's definitely Ubuntu. I mean, the word itself, when you hear it, it has a beautiful frequency and a resonance that um, just creates an effect on people, and it certainly created an effect on me. And I loved the concept so much um, when I learned it from uh, Mamadou Kujam Touré, and I really wanted to research it more and uh, really understand the philosophy of Ubuntu. And I read a really great um, story of this anthropologist who went to visit an African tribe, and she put a, a basket of fruit under a tree, and she asked the children, uh, the first one to get to the fruit will have the whole basket for themselves. Uh, and so instead of running towards the tree, they all held each other's hands and walked towards the tree together and shared the basket of fruit. And when she asked them, why did you do that? They replied, Ubuntu, how can one of us be happy when the others are sad? And to me, that concept just really embodies the universal concept of interconnectedness, something we've forgotten in our modern day and age. And it took COVID-19 for us to remember that because all of a sudden our personal freedoms were taken away and we couldn't see the people we love, we couldn't do the things we love. And so um, we were a little bit, I, I think, isolated and it reminded us of the importance of community and the importance of interdependence. And that's where we launched the Ubuntu Love Challenge. We really wanted to remind people of our, in, our interdependence, our humanity, our essence. And um, we rallied a group of people to come together and express Ubuntu in their own way. That's, that's uh, wonderful to hear. Uh, Mr. Kujim, I wanted to ask you about 
you know, how does it feel for you now to see the impact of Ubuntu crossing beyond the borders of, of Africa and, and basically looking about how you've been able for, for it to go from one place to whole world? Yes, you know, what is interesting is um, I, uh, I came here uh, on a business trip and I found myself stranded when all airports shut down uh, around the world. And uh, I ended up being uh, stranded in the UAE. And uh, when we had that conversation with uh, Sheikh Habadur, the whole point for me was uh, to, to express what, what is being done in Africa and what Ubuntu meant. And as uh, we, we, we discussed further um, and engaged with her team and we launched this movement, I was so amazed by the level of response uh, in the region. And in that sense, that sense of humanity, Ubuntu spoke for itself as we rolled out uh, the initiative and the movement because people could identify themselves to it and called upon their heart. I could feel so much generosity, so much um, commitment towards, uh, towards uh, the, the, the concept and um, and the philosophy and uh, and it's that very beautiful thing where you something you think was specific to your home um, is actually something that is specific to planet Earth and to the humans on this planet Earth and uh, um, and I was even more surprised to see that the response was even more uh, astounding um, here in the UAE having ministers celebrities and also of course influencers around the world embracing this concept and calling upon their heart and um, and what makes them human to, to, to bring more people behind it and to rally as one species and as, as one generation um, to, to face the challenges of our time. And in that sense, you know, it's, it's, it's that word that sounded very much like a wake up call as to remember who we are in those times of distress. And you know, Ubuntu calls to the heart right and uh, if you look at uh, um, the frequency uh, of fear versus the frequency of love uh, love has a much bigger deeper um, resonance and frequency among people right and that's why it, um, uh, it it was so amazing for me to see the message of loving one another as human being and putting love first in ahead of fear to help us overcome this challenge and making a global movement for me was the realization of a word that moved from a concept to a reality that became planetary and this is fantastic for me and um, what was even more specific with the UAE and um, is is the speed at which people responded right uh, uh, and the magnitude and it reminds me also uh, which is interesting we you know with a uh, with Islam, you know, with this um, uh, the the, fi the five pillar, the fifth pillar, which is the zakat, which also connect to what is very human inside of us, right? Uh, which also made it even even more uh, impactful for people to respond to the call. And uh, in that sense, I felt at home, uh, and that's the beauty of Ubuntu, right? When you bring this word and uh, you feel at home uh, wherever you go, and you find a new home with people who embrace that philosophy just because they're human, it's extraordinary. Indeed it is, and I think what you've just said, uh, when you're talking about the speed of how people have been able to respond to it, is because there is a need for it, you know, that it, it, it's, it's, you're responding to something that you want as well. And I think last year, more than ever, we all wanted, you know, togetherness and, and, and being, you know, there for each other and that unitedness. Um, Sheikh Abudur, I wanted to ask you, what is next for the Ubuntu Love Challenge? Where, where would you like to see it? Where would you like to take it next? So we started the Ubuntu Love Challenge in April and um, it took us really quite far in terms of the partners that we rallied on board. I mean, as uh, Mamadou Kujim mentioned, we had, you know, Ministry of Community Development uh, support us in the 100 Good Deeds Challenge. So we partnered up with them 
Um, we also launched an initiative around women and, and really giving voice to the voiceless through uh, uh, Still She Rises. And we had a series of interviews with 15 influential women. We had two festivals that were online where we managed to spread the philosophy of Ubuntu by bringing together thought leaders and spiritual people together and uh, influencers to really talk about Ubuntu. Uh, and so we, we managed to really tap into different sectors of society. We worked together with Sharjah Entrepreneurship Center to, to launch an initiative um, called You Can, where we supported projects um, in Africa and the Middle East that, uh, that touch upon um, agriculture and healthcare, something that we need at this point in time. Uh, and then we decided actually, you know, this is going really well. We need to solidify this movement in a foundation and we set up the Ubuntu Foundation which really aims to elevate human consciousness while supporting the regeneration of our planet. That was the philosophy behind the foundation and um, the foundation is an NGO that is going to be really looking at supporting projects that have and embody the Ubuntu philosophy while tapping into one of the five elements and we're really looking at supporting unique projects and I talk about the five elements, I'll elaborate a little bit about them now. So the first element is, is earth, and we're looking at su sustainable projects in agriculture and mining, air, projects that are connected to wind, power, energy, and clean tech, water, we're looking into structured resources of water, fire, we're looking into alternative sources of clean energy, and the fifth element is love, and we're looking at culture, education, healthcare, and ancient wisdom, things that tap into our heart center. So this is uh, our vision for the Ubuntu Foundation. It's a uh, it's fairly new at the moment and we're very excited with where we're going to take it. And we're looking forward to collaborating on with many people on exciting projects as the year progresses. That sounds indeed amazing. I mean, um, when you when you talk about the, the, the five different sort of areas and then you mention love, it's, it's amazing to see how they're, you know, been broken down. Um, so th that means soon we will be hearing more about the foundation and the, the projects of the foundation, right? Yes, correct. We're at, we're at the moment um, inquiring and researching and talking to people. We have some exciting projects in the pipeline, but we'll be announcing them quite soon. And we really believe that this is an opportunity for to create the new earth. You know, this is what we need to see moving ahead in the future. And I just want to mention, you know, something that really resonated with me personally was something that Desmond Tutu mentioned about Ubuntu. And I think, you know, he really embodies Ubuntu in his own um, person. Uh, but he says that, that Ubuntu defines us as a society. So we always think of ourselves as individuals separated from one another. But we are connected and everything that we do affects the whole world. So when you do well, it spreads out for the whole community and whole of humanity. And that's something that really um, is the core of our philosophy in the Ubuntu Foundation. It reminds us that no one is an island. Every single thing that you do, whether it's good or bad, has an effect on your community, on your family, on your friends. And so it makes us a little bit more careful about the choices we make in our lives, how it impacts others. And everyone has a role to play, whether it's big or small. And we have to inspire each other to be part of this bigger and brighter future. And so really the Ubuntu Foundation is is about how do we bring that philosophy into our everyday lives. And so we're looking forward to collaborating on great projects and just tell everybody to watch the space and we'll, we'll let you know how it goes. And in the we'll meantime, definitely be following up. Yes, please. And in the meantime, of course, you know, the Ubuntu Love Challenge continues as a way to uh, expand and extend a community of people committed to doing good. Uh, uh, Shahabudu launched a very interesting initiative uh, uh, in Sharjah with uh, with um, the the you know the Australian International School there, where all the kids actually are committed for to do a good deed for 100 days, right? The 100 good deeds. So um, and and it's getting more, and they love it. And this, you know, people feel good when they do good. 
And it's very important to remind people that it doesn't take so much to do good, and therefore it's not too hard to feel good. And as we create and amplify this mindset, then the collaboration and uh, the interdependence becomes stronger, and what we can achieve is, is 10 times more impactful. And uh, I guess in the current society with those challenging times where we isolated, um, et cetera, the, the power of the collective is what has made the survival of the human species. And it's really this time to, to do it again and come together as one. We are one. Yes. Well, thank you so much. We could talk about this for a really long time, but we're definitely looking forward to what's what's to come next. Thank you so much for your time and um, we will speak soon. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you very much. Bye.